cap out here, nigga. Watch how I pop out. Let me find out. You be lying in all your raps. Let me find out. Alright, go. You got this one going? Yeah, it's going too. Okay, cool. So both of them going. Both of them going. Alright, cool, 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 cool. Alright, hold on, hold on, hold on. You already know what it is, man. Christian Combo in the building. Tap that right there because I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear, hear it all the fans and stuff. You know what I mean? Appreciate you. Got a special guest in the building tonight. You know what I mean? Y'all know how I do. I normally don't introduce my guests. I let them introduce themselves. Um, yeah, I know. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. She, she's a little nervous. She, she think I'm crazy. You know what I mean? I done brought her over here, done fed her, gave her something to drink, trying to show her we, you know, we're a nice establishment. You know, so she's not too scared. Yeah. Ma'am, tell me who you are. I'm Treasure, and I'm an artist. You're an artist? Yeah. So you want to jump right into this, or you, or you want to go and dress slow? How you want to do it? This is, this is your show. So. Alright, let's, let's jump right into this. So you say your name is Treasure. Yes. How did you get that name? Is that your real name, or is that your artist name? That is my real name. I'm a birth certificate and everything. Your mama named you Treasure? Yes. Your mama <laughs> named you Treasure, you better call it Treasure. That's what, yeah. I, that's what I hear. You got no choice. You got no choice. Okay, where you from, Treasure? I'm from Louisiana. Why you look at me like that? I don't sound like it. I know I don't. My family does. No, no, because earlier when we was talking off camera, mm -hmm. you were talking about Washington. Yeah. Right, I, so I'm trying to figure out how you got from Louisiana. So you want to know the whole story? Yeah, but, uh, that, that's what we're here for. <laughs> we're here to find out who you are. Because my heart. But, um... <laughs> this is all bonus. All this on the table is bonus. <laughs> okay, it's bonus. I yeah. So, to speed up the story, all right, um, I'm from Louisiana. What part? Laplace and Gearville. So, my parents are from New Orleans. Okay. But we moved from there to Texas. New Orleans is some of the nicest people, too, just so you know. I went down there for a football game. Some of them. Yeah, I don't even eat spicy food, but they had me eating gumbo all over the place. You don't like spicy food? <laughs> one, one thing of pepper and... That's why you didn't do the boneless wings, huh? <laughs> you, you better believe it. That's why. <laughs> but uh, I, I came from Louisiana to Texas, and then after Texas, I joined the Army, and that's when I got shipped to Washington. So I stayed in there for a while. You joined the Army? I joined the Army, yeah. By choice or like? Yeah, by like... choice. So I was like, I'm, I'm done. Well, here. everybody don't have it by choice. My brother had to go because the judge said, hey, you either go to the Army or you go to jail. God damn. Yeah, my brother said, you know what, sign me up. That's not illegal, but... No, in Illinois, they were doing that to everybody. Really? Yeah, Blagojevich, he was the governor. God damn. And that was, that was his choice he was giving you. If you caught, if you caught a case and you had a felony, uh -huh. you either could enlist in the army or you can go and serve that time out. Oh, no. Yeah, I would... And every, everybody was going to the army. I feel like it's just... But that ain't a good choice because everybody's getting kicked out, too. I don't know. I ain't going... No comment. What's no comment, comment against the army. No comment against the army. What whatever do you mean? Did you have a problem with the army? Sir, sir, no, I love America. <laughs> I love the army ain't America. <laughs> Just the army ain't America, so you can't you can't use that as a cop out on me. Alright, the How army. How many years did you do in the army? I only did two years in the army because I got injured. So, so are they paying you now? Like for life? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, <are>. they should? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. Okay, I'm gonna say if they're not, we need to call somebody. No, that's, that's the goal for everybody who gets out of the army. That's what they want is to get paid once they get out, but it's hard. But I actually got injured when I was in the army, so. Then how many years were you in Washington? In Washington, it was about eight years, I'm gonna say. I love Washington. I ain't gonna lie. See, that's crazy. I love it. Because we hear people all the time say this is like one of the most depressing places to be because it rains pretty much every day. It, that's an exaggeration, like a motherfucker. Like, no, it's not as sunny and bright as Texas because it's fucking heat and the sun is just beaming down on you all the time. But it's beautiful. It's it's really beautiful and it's peaceful. And I'm I'm different, so I feel like in Washington I was able to fit in a little bit more. Like be yourself. Exactly. Compared to Texas, Louisiana, and all that. You don't feel like you can be yourself in Texas. And I'm dorky and I'm fucking weird. And I Austin say to... keep Austin weird. But so you, so you can't be yourself in a place where you're supposed to be weird? Is that what you're telling me? When it comes to black people, when I'm with my black people and stuff, like it's, it They was, expect you to be a certain way. They expected me to be a certain way and I was never that. Even coming from Louisiana, I wasn't like that. I had a country accent, but I was still weird and goofy and 
all this extra stuff, and it was kind of hard for me to fit in. What make you feel like you're categorized as weird and goofy? Like this, this ain't even where my conversation was going, but this is what I like about my platform because I want it to be natural and organic. Yeah. So for you to express that, that's like one of the biggest things that I harp on with people is mm -hmm. mental health and them being in touch with themselves. Of course, I've always been just me, always. But when I notice how people like kind of react to who I am, so when I was with just black females and everything, it was like, oh, what are you doing? You, that's not cool. Like you, I would say certain things and I would say goofy shit, and it would just be like, no, you're not supposed to act like that. I had friends like that. Like, what are you saying? It's because it didn't resonate with the African American culture. Exactly. And then I would be with other races, and they would be like, children, we love you, and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, I could be myself, but I still love my black people at the same time so it was just it was kind of hard for me to fit in anywhere because it was like okay with the non-black people they accept me for who i am but with the black people it was just like they didn't really accept that and i had to tone it down a little bit because i'm extra goofy like it's extra corny if i'm really like I'm, if i'm comfortable with you if i'm comfortable with you it's really fucking corny so it's just like I shouldn't be questioned about my blackness because every time I wake up, I'm black. I know I'm black. I know where I come from. I love where I come from. So it was just like, I can be who I want to be because I know I'm black. So it was like, I can't preach that to people who are like, oh, you need to be a certain way. I can't do that. So would you say that you get majority of your support and love for what you do? Like when you actually showcase your work mm -hmm. from outside of your own race? Uh, I've had a lot of, I'm starting to get more black, I, I'm, I guess black people who like anime and all of that stuff, who are more comfortable to come to me and be like, this is what I love, this is what I want, and they can be more of themselves to me. Okay. And they're because they don't feel like you're gonna judge them. They feel like I'm not gonna judge them. Because when you got the one that's in the trap painting shoes, and yeah. you know what I mean, you got rap music blasts, and they like, oh, I can't call him and ask him for no Dragon Ball Z shoes. No, I want this, and they like fixing their glasses and stuff, like, no. <laughs> and they can't, they can't really, I guess they don't feel comfortable with me, but I've had black customers, but when I was in Washington, it was more of different races that supported me more because of what I do. I guess... I don't know, I guess. You keep saying what you do, what you do. Let's <laughs> let's let's go ahead and tap into that real quick. Let's tap into it. What you do. I don't know what I do. So I got a friend mm -hmm. that's a mutual friend of yours. Who is that? I mean I know what name you call him by. I call him Fabio. So I don't I don't know what you call him. What's his real name? Javi. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but I call him Fabio. Right. But so mm -hmm. when I started this platform, I was looking, you know, like stuff that interests me, people that interest me, that I found like, you know, really deserve their flowers and deserve credit for the stuff they do. Mm -hmm. So I seen you making these 3D art, glow in the dark pictures, right? Yeah. And then I saw you painted shoes. I said, oh, look, I can <laughs> kill two birds with one rock with this, right? Yeah. I uh -huh. need some shoes painted anyway. Yeah, I saw that. You That's know? That. So let, let's try this, but before I, before I get to that, I want to know, mm -hmm. how did you get started in art, period? How did I get started? Yeah. That's a sad story, I'm not going to lie. But you still want me to tell? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she said, she said, I'm getting emotional, but I'm going to tell her. I'm going to tell her. No, I don't cry in front of people. But, um, it's okay, we don't judge. <laughs> people cry on you? I mean, if, if that's what you need to do in order to, you know what I mean, get through what you're going through, let it out. <laughs> but um, how I started, um, um, I started when I was 13, and we went through a lot of stuff, me and my family, like homelessness and all of that, at a very young age. I don't feel bad. I slept on my homeboy's couch. See, it's just, it's sad that, like, a lot of us go through it. Like, I talk to a lot of people, and it's just... It's crazy. At, some, at some point in your life, yeah. Yeah, like it's it's ridiculous to me. But um, at a young age, I went through it, and I was just watching my parents going through like all these hardships. And I'm I'm 13, I can't really do much to help them. So I'm sitting here, and I'm like, okay, what do I do? 
what I do with my time. And all of a sudden, I just started feeling so sad. And I'm Christian, and my family is super Christian. So I didn't know what depression was. I didn't understand what... what because they always tell you, God don't put you through nothing that you can't handle. Exactly. Pray it away. And I'm like, okay, I'm praying every night. I'm good. And then I'm like, every day I feel sad. And I'm like... Why do I feel this? And I'm talking to my parents. And I'm like, why do I feel this? They're like, pray, talk to them. And I'm like, one day I was just so sad. And I was like, I can't talk to my parents. They don't understand what I'm going through. I was like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to exist. And I was like, I need something to occupy my mind. So I just started. I was like, okay. Someone told me, give me, give me a pencil and a paper. And let me just, let me do something to just occupy my mind. And it helped. It helped so much. And after that, I think I drew Yoda. Okay. Yoda, because I was obsessed with Star Wars for some reason. That was my favorite thing in the world. And I sketched Yoda out. And I, I did a picture of Yoda, and it was so detailed. And I showed my parents. And they were like, oh my god, Trish, this is amazing. And you're, you're so talented. And I'm like, okay, thank you. I felt... I felt good. Like, I didn't feel sad no more. I didn't feel like I didn't want to exist. I was like, I'm good at something. And I just started painting and painting and drawing and sketching. And my whole room was covered in, like, drawings, like, from floor to ceiling. And it kind of showed my mental health because I was avoiding, like, my depression. But at the same time, it was my escape. So I just kept doing it. And look where it took you. Did you go to school for art? No. That's so you don't have no art degree, no being taking no classes, like I mean regular like high school stuff like that. High like, school was the only thing I did, but I didn't really take it seriously. I don't think anybody did. I don't think anybody took <laughs> in high school seriously. Like, did you? You want to be honest with you? Yeah. So disclaimer, disclaimer. Mm -hmm. I took an art class mm -hmm. because I was trying to talk to this girl. Right, <laughs> but the crazy part is her mom was the art teacher. So right, see see how you're looking, but check this out. We was always taught, okay, look, uh -huh. if you want to get the girl, mm -hmm. it ain't even about the dad. Every, everybody think, oh, you gotta be cool with the dad. The dad signed off on you. Mm -hmm. It's about the mom. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm schooling y'all on this. Yeah, you. <laughs> because the mom runs the dad. Mm. Damn, that make a lot of sense. So if the mom come and say, hey, he's a nice guy. I like well, him. I like him. Be the nice. dad ain't got no choice but to say it. God damn. Like, that's smart as hell. I, I just look like this. <laughs> I just look like this. Yeah. Shut up. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah, so that's why I took it. But I actually turned out like mm -hmm. I liked it. But mm -hmm. it also, it helped me tap into other artistic sides that I have. Exactly. So that's when I started going hard with the music, and then I started liking film, and I started looking at all these different things. Yeah, that's it. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. I mean, I took it serious. I'm like, some of us, they get paid for to do oh, art. Okay, okay, okay. Some okay, of us okay. get paid to do art, and we didn't take it serious at all. That's why I'm confused. Today. I was going to ask, I didn't care. Okay, care. so, you didn't, go, you didn't go to school for art. I did not. Before I go even farther into this, what's your favorite color? Uh, turquoise. Why you look at me like that? Do you like, ever have a normal? Do, do you ever have a normal answer? <laughs> not like blue, gray. I'm not turquoise. My name is Treasure. Uh, like at the let me let me look at what hue that is. I gotta be different. I gotta be different. So I'm just kidding. I love turquoise because it's the ocean. Like I feel like I connect to the ocean. It's weird. My name. So you can say ocean blue. You have to use a big word like turquoise. Turquoise. I know you can't spell it, but <laughs> T U R. T O Q. You put two T's in there? Is it? I don't know. It's not two. Hey, hey, I be smoking. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Um. <laughs> okay. So my next question for you. Yeah. We get what's your favorite color? Is you have an idea of what is your definition of art? Because everybody looks at art differently, and they say, "Oh, that's not art. This is art." Like, what's your definition of your expression? Of art. I'm kind of an asshole when it comes to art. Like, I'm not gonna lie. So a little kid brain is wrong up to you, you can lie. I mean, if it's art. a circle on a canvas, I'm just not gonna understand what, how is that art? Like, I'm 
I'm not gonna understand that part. I guess other people be like, oh, it means something, but I don't see that. It means like an infinite, ongoing situation. If it's I, a cycle, because I, I look at work. it as privilege. If it's in a like museum and it's everybody's looking at it, it's so beautiful and all that, I look at it as privilege. I don't look at it as art. Do you like going to museums? I love going to museums. <laughs> What's your favorite museum? Out here? Just anywhere. Um, no, just museums. I don't know the name of museums. Like, is that what you do for vacation? Did you go? Did you go to museums for I vacation? I don't go on vacation. I just paint. I really don't be doing anything, you guys, anymore. <laughs> I just be in my house just painting. <clears throat> just painting. That's it. All I do really. You can ask. See? <laughs> That's it. I don't do anything. I don't. Okay. I need friends. So you make you making friends right now? Hey, hey, if y'all don't have no friends, make sure y'all go follow Treasure. And make sure she get her friends up, okay? She needs to get out of the house. Write out an application because I don't have just any friends. <laughs> You can't be picky now. You say you, need, you say you need friends. Like, either you take the friends or you don't take the friends. I ain't taking any friends. God damn, you gotta have my back at one point. Like, I'm very, yeah. See, yeah. So, as an artist in y'all community, right? Because that's not really my thing, but I, mm -hmm. I, like I said, I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So, I dabble a little bit. A little bit. So, have you heard about the controversy that's going on in Florida? No, what's that? About the statue? Of the David? No, I don't watch news. Okay, so the David, you know what the David is, right? I don't. The scul the sculpture, the statue of the small ass dude with the small penis. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, so they were teaching this to these kids okay. in school. Mm -hmm. And the parents got outraged. Because they were saying it's pornographic. You're this showing you're showing my child pornographic images, you're teaching them about stuff, but this is where I'm confused. I'm gonna get your opinion. Yeah. But you got them teaching these kids about sex education mm -hmm. and their body parts and stuff when they're in the first, second, third grade. So these kids, they're in sixth, seventh, eighth grade, and yeah. you're teaching them this in an art class. Oh. Damn. Yeah. Do you think they should be teaching this or not? Did they show the? Oh, they the showed the penis. They showed the penis. They showed the penis. The, penis. Hey, the little one that's there. Yeah. <laughs> But they shot it. So what grade is it again? I think it's like um, junior high, somewhere around that. So it's like six, seven, eight. I feel like at that age, we do understand what private parts are. I mean, I, I feel like at that age, I understood what a penis is and a vagina is. I wasn't interested in penises because I was just a kid, but I wouldn't want it teached. No, I wouldn't. Because when I was learning, I feel like art should be fun. It shouldn't be that serious. And that's a serious statue. That's I didn't think you would say that. You didn't think I would say that? I didn't. Okay, so let me tell you why I didn't think you would say that. <laughs> I didn't think you would say that because you're an artist. Yeah. And that's all about freedom and expression. I know. And for you to be able to do okay. what it is that makes you I feel all good. all these tattoos. Piercing. Oh, I'm getting to that too. I'm getting to that too. Don't, yeah, don't rush me. Don't rush me. Don't cheat me. Um, so, with it being about freedom and stuff, mm -hmm. I felt. Now, one thing I do think they should have done. Yeah. They should have notified the parents ahead of time. Yeah. And said, anything. this is going to be in our curriculum on this week. Exactly. If you don't want your child to be a part of this, please let us know. We'll remove them and teach them something different. I completely agree. But at the same time, at that age, I feel like they should be doing. Fun stuff like that's I feel like that's kind of like high school grade type stuff. But now I'm gonna show you this. That's high school grade type stuff, right? Yeah. But these same kids are listening to the radio every day, right? True. But that's their choice. We're in school. If I'm, it's like being in somebody's house. Like if if I'm a mom, I'm not gonna be like, yeah, go go watch porn. Like it doesn't make sense. Like if I'm, I'm not gonna let him just. But yeah, I don't think they were look. I don't think they were looking at it like they. Were. I know, but still, as a kid, you should be looking at shit like this. My painting. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just play that in there. You should be looking at kid stuff because once we get old, it's just it's the adult time. And it, how do you, I feel how like how you, you grow out of kid. the kids' mentality though? If you're constantly 
you grow out of that kid's mentality at a certain point. Everybody does, especially in high school. In high school, you're just like, okay, damn, I'm really close to that adulthood. I feel like that's when it should happen. But before that, be a kid. Like, I draw cartoons because I miss my childhood. I love my childhood. That's when I was the happiest. And if I could go back and visit my childhood, I would do it almost every day. So let them experience it as much as they can in that moment. So no, they shouldn't be looking at that because just let them be kids. In my opinion, yes, I'm an artist, but no, be a kid. Because look at me, I'm drawing cartoons because I love them. <laughs> I miss my childhood. I'm drawing cartoons. Don't do it. Don't grow up. <laughs> Please don't grow up. I, I will take a quick break. I'm going to cut this live. If you want to catch the rest of the interview, make sure you tune in. YouTube, Cushion Combo. We're going to have it up on there for you. Hmm. Hit that red button on top of this one for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I know I do You be watching Charles and White? That's why you don't watch nothing. You don't watch TV or nothing, do you? Not really. It's paint. No, it's paint. Hey, what's up, man? You asked me here. Like, <laughs> Robot. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna go off, right? <laughs> so er earlier you made a comment, right? You was like, oh, I got these tattoos, I got this nose ring. Mm -hmm. How many tattoos you got? God damn, I don't think I ever counted it. But I got two sleeves and then right here. So just calculate that. Did you draw? <laughs> Did I draw them? No, I like to let the tattoo artists do what they want. Cause Tattoo artists are artists too, so it's like them to do what? I'm with you, yes. but, what? but, <laughs> right, so, uh -huh. these over here, uh -huh. I look at these in the mirror, I'm like, oh, shit, you that nigga. All right. And then I'm like, remember that time I got high? No, oh my God. And I was sitting in my living room, my apartment, and my neighbor was learning how to tattoo. But that's your fault. <laughs> And then he put this one in, he, and he took up this whole space. So it's like, I, I don't even know what cover up to get on. What did he do? What is that, a cross? Yeah, we was high. You know, when you're young, you high, you just be doing shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, yeah, I, I sat there, you know what I mean? Let him tap. I mean, so, certain people you can let be an artist, and certain people you gotta tell. Like, <laughs> so, so you're trying to say that's not art? Is that what you're saying? This isn't art? It's art in a certain place. That's cool. That's cool. It's like level one. Level. So I, I need a cover up artist. Either you know somebody you can recommend, send them, send them my way. I don't know in Texas, but in Washington, I know a few people on that too. You want to go back to Washington, though? No? I love Washington. I ain't. That's bullshit. Ain't nothing against. I mean, I guess Texas, I don't want to say I hate Texas because a lot of people I know. But I don't, I don't feel like I, I fit in here. Like, it's not my thing. You keep saying fit in, fit in. I guess that's the word I use, but I feel like I you can't find my people. You don't have to fit in. I know I have to fit in. That's why I created all this shit. Really? Every time I reach out to somebody, mm -hmm. I want to come to your studio and record a song with you, or I want to, you got a show going on. Mm -hmm. $150, but I know you charge my homeboy over here $25, yeah. but you think I look like I got it, so you upcharging me. Damn. Yeah, it's all, I can show you so many receipts from right. messages and stuff from dealing with people. And you, I, I, give you, I give you another one right now. I just threw a showcase the other week, right? Mm -hmm. I gave away $500 to the best performance of the night. Really? Me, I gave away, I gave away $300. Mm -hmm. And then somebody that I had as a judge gave the dude another two fifty. Wow. Right. Nobody had to pay to perform. Nobody had to pay to get in. None of that. All your people was free. All you had to do was show up. Good. Right? Right. So you already know how this is going. Yeah, I'm calculating. <laughs> I've had I've had three people that have events going on that are coming up in the future. Mm hmm And I reached out to them like, hey, lock me in mm -hmm. for the event. What can I do? Move on. Mm -hmm. And all three have tried to charge me. Mm -mm. And you deal with that? Yeah. I, I deal with it with kindness. Why? I deal with it with, hey, appreciate it, but I'm going to go ahead and pass on this opportunity. Oh, okay. I get because 
because karma comes around so fast. It does. You're going to need something from me. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to swallow that pride and ask me for it. And when, exactly. Even when you ask me for it, that's when I'm not going to respond. Okay, I respect that. Because I, I build my relationships, they're genuine relationships. Like, if I fuck with you, then mm -hmm. once I start fucking with you, until you show me yeah, so there'll be something real bogus about you, then I'm good. Exactly. So that that's the type of stuff that goes on. I do I do the same with my paintings sometimes. Like with you, like usually I would require a deposit on the shoes and stuff, but I was like, okay, you ordered that, I'm gonna do the shoes. And when you say, hey, I need this much of a deposit for the painting, you exactly so because this is your this is your job this is your craft exactly. i don't i don't look at it like this is your hobby exactly and exactly. that's i think that's where people go wrong they don't know how to differentiate like this is what i do for fun mm -hmm. and this is like an actual profession for me exactly you know what i mean so i look at people in that light so when i bring and invite people mm -hmm. i give you a professional feel like i want you to know you are appreciated because i know your time is valuable yeah that's why I, cook the whole meal like i was like you food what do you mean <laughs> drink because because you come in here to spend your time yes you could be at home eating i could be chilling i could be painting you can do, be doing whatever you want yeah to do. <laughs> exactly. so i'm appreciative of that and i i, I be wanting to show people that yeah you know what i mean so it, it goes both ways oh, yeah and speaking of that the fit in fit in fit in that you keep using <laughs> you don't fit into into the art scene do you realize that i know i don't do you know why though? I have no clue why I don't. I don't. I don't know why. I have never in my life mm -hmm. seen that three D art like that that glows in the dark. And from the back, it don't look that great. <laughs> but I'm trying to figure out how. When did you come up with that concept to do to do a three D like that and also make it glow in the dark? So, like I said, um, I started painting when I was 13, and I stayed on the canvas. I did. I was devoted to the canvas. I was like, it has to fit on the canvas. And then I started getting bored at one point, and I was like, I don't. Like, I was just painting on the canvas. I'm like, this is so boring. Like, it's the same thing over and over again. I was like, what can I do different? And that's creative. And one day, I was just drawing, and I drew too big. It, it didn't fit on the canvas, so it was like cut off, and I was like, what the fuck do I do? Like, I don't know what to do. So I was like, okay, let me make it go off the canvas. You created this shit on accident. Accident. Mm -hmm. People think I do it on purpose, but it's completely <laughs> Don't on. ever tell nobody that. I know it's on my canvas. <laughs> God dang. She it's got she got a million dollar idea, and she just made it on accident. I was just drawing. I didn't want to start over, because I already, like sketched it out and everything and I was like I'm not doing this shit again so I was like okay what can I do and I sat there thinking I was like wait hmm how many how many of these do you think you've made since you came over the concept I can't even count how many 3d paintings I made after I started drawing too big for the canvas that was it my mind couldn't comprehend drawing if you ask me to draw something perfectly on a canvas I probably look to struggle with it because I feel like my brain is just calculated, like, bigger, bigger, better. I don't know. I don't know what that is, but I've tried. i definitely tried. Can't do it. Can't do it. <coughs> what was the first 3D that you made? First 3D that I made. Yeah. I want to say it was in high school. I think I did like a dinosaur painting and I was painting it and I was like okay that because dinosaurs you know how it's long like their their mouths and stuff so uh, I started drawing that and it didn't fit on there and I just was like okay let me do the I ain't gonna tell you my, my secrets and stuff. yeah yeah I want you but, to I, I, don't, I don't want nobody to go start stealing your idea first of all yeah. I just want to say this if I see anybody with any 3D art <laughs> That didn't come from you. We we on your ass. <laughs> Just like that. We want y'all to know we on you. Okay? Because ain't nobody around here making this shit. Alright? Second of all, if you do got some 3D art and it came from her, if you got one of these cricket greens, I'm on your ass. Because <laughs> it's supposed to be one of one. One of one. That's it. Do original. That's it. 
There's not gonna be another one of those. What's the craziest? What's the craziest that somebody's asked you to make? The craziest thing? Yeah. Oh, when I had to do the Joker. Like it's on my Instagram page and everything, but I had to add lights. I had to do it 3D. I didn't have to add lights, but he spent so much money on it because he believed in me. And I was like, I gotta give him extra. Why is that shocking? Because I can tell, I know, I can tell in your face when you said it. <laughs> you're like, oh, because he believed in me, like. It's what? so shocking because the people I deal with, no offense to the people in my inbox and stuff, but when I tell them my prices, because I do go above and beyond, they're just like, ooh. They try to have you. Yeah, they they really do, and they're like, oh, I'll I'll wait for the next one. I'll wait for the next one. Oh, you can't go down on that. I'm just like. You know the one I really wanted. Mm -hmm. For myself. What? The Bugs Bunny one. The Bugs Bunny one. It's available. You should have it. Yeah, the one with when he's in the hole and stuff. The orange and green one. Yeah. Yeah, it's available. Why are you not selling them? It's sold. I have a whole website, but no, it's not sold. Sorry, it's on my website. It's there. Like it's not. It's still for sale. I, you know what? It's still. I'm about sale. to get mad. So basically, <laughs> what you're telling me is that I could have been on the website shopping, shopping. Yeah, just whatever people don't grab as soon as I post it, because most people just grab it as soon as I post it. And I feel bad for other people. I put it on my website, so it's there. Anything I paint is there that don't sell like quick. And tell the people what your website is. Um, oh. Oh, 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 no, no, I got it. Don't you mess my picture up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Treasure Planet Art as Square Face. Can we tag it in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, oh, oh, oh. We're going to tag it in there. Oh. <laughs> I'm not big on selling my stuff because it's just, I enjoy doing it and I put it on there if you want to buy it, you want to buy it. You're not big on selling your stuff? Yeah, I'm not like out here just like, oh my God, it has to sell, it has to sell. Okay, so that's going to bring me to my next question then. If you're not big on selling your stuff, mm -hmm. what is, how do I, what's the most? someone has offered you for a piece of your work? That offered me or who actually went through with Both. me? Both. Um, the most they offer me, I think... You ain't gotta give it like an exact... If it's, if it's like, how many commas, like... <laughs> it's not crazy. Okay. Because when it comes to art, people will think it's gonna be cheap. So, the most I was offered was, I think, $3,000 for like a mural. And I was going to do it for the sun, and it was going to be glow in the dark. I was going to make, like, these clouds, and it was going to look dope. And it was all going to glow in the dark. That didn't go through. But the most I think I got for a painting is, like, 700 Like, custom? Yeah. 700 But I sold, like, smaller paintings. For some reason, smaller paintings sell quicker because I know people struggle. People that have bills, they have all it's this It's a stuff. budget. Exactly, so I try to make smaller paintings like this so they can afford it because I understand. I understand the struggle. So. Okay, okay. Have you done any work for any celebrities? Celebrities? <laughs> Anybody famous? Any athletes? No. I guess, I don't know. No. One day I want to get there, I guess, but if they like cartoons. And so, so, you're trying to say I'm not famous? Oh.
I don't know why I'm laughing at that. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing at that. Like, the nigga cut off his ear. I mean, but that's how I feel like painting makes you feel. Because I'm always painting. And sometimes I kind of go crazy. Like, I really do. Like, Is there anybody, like, any artist that inspires hmm? your work? Inspires my work? No, it's just me. Just life experiences? It's just me. Me chasing my childhood most of the time. That's why I do cartoons. I do realist, realistic stuff sometimes, but I don't enjoy it as much as cartoons. Why not? Okay, wait, freeze. You do realistic stuff, but you don't enjoy it as much as cartoons. Don't so what medium would you consider yourself when you are doing your artwork? Like, what medium do you choose? Like, is, it, is it more like fabrics, acrylics, is it... Like you say, real versus anime. Yeah. Anime, it, it depends on the anime. I sound like I know what I'm talking about, don't I? Yeah, you do. I don't. You really do. I'm like, I'm like, are you hard? Okay. I just look like this. Oh, shut up. <laughs> but, um, I don't think I'm very picky on what I paint, as long as it's paint. Acrylic, I mean, I'm good at acrylic, so I stick to acrylic. Watercolor, I'm not that great at. Oh, so you said I can beat you. you if, we had a if we had a painting competition and we used watercolors, you, you said I could beat you. You can never beat me, but if that's a challenge, then I accept it. <laughs> You that was one of the ideas I had for this. Really? Yeah, I was going to put a canvas up and put some papers up and see who could draw the best picture mm -hmm. within like five minutes. Mm -hmm. okay. Paint or draw. Five minutes, that's not enough time. Why? It's art. Yeah. What? It's speed art. What's up? We, we ain't never seen Bob Ross said, we'll just put a little tree right here. Oh my god. Put a tree right here. And he does. That's Bob Ross, though. <laughs> How much we betting? Alright, let's say two dollars. <laughs> I'm not betting a lot, I'm sorry. Even though I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> you can't guarantee seven, you're gonna beat me if you ain't never seen me seven. draw nothing, you ain't never seen me paint nothing. I have researched you too, just like you researched me. I researched you. So. so you saw my artwork on there? No. Where? Oh what what part? You ain't see the shoes I painted? You painted shoes? Yeah, I paint shoes too. Where? On your Yeah. Which profile though? On my artist profile, not the podcast profile. On the See, artist that's profile. the one I looked at, the podcast one. Yeah, go to my artist profile. You have artist. I, how I, many profiles you got? I got, so look, that's the whole thing. I don't want people to associate this platform with just music. So okay. the, cushion, the cushion combo is strictly for me to help people promote themselves and get mm -hmm. their stuff out there, people that I think need to be seen and heard. I appreciate that, I really do. And then when you go to my own personal music page, like that's where you get to tap into me. Oh, like, so you got levels. Like I gotta get on every level. Yeah, you don't never want people to just feel like they just know you. You know what I mean? Yeah, dang, I get it. Okay. You, you always yeah. want people. I always want to leave people like, dang, this one. So my mm -hmm. first project I ever put out, mm -hmm. like, not first project I ever put out, but like the last one I put out mm -hmm. was like Man of Many Hats. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's this thing that resonates with me. I heard T.I. doing an interview one day, and he like, man, he's like, I'm really all that. He's like, I, he said, I knock your ass out. He said, I fuck your old lady. I go home. <laughs> I kiss my kids and put them to bed. Like, there's all this stuff. Yeah, that he, like that he's you do, yeah. And that's what made me be like, damn, bro, I, like, I do a lot mm -hmm. of shit. You know what I mean? And people don't see half of it. Exactly, yeah. But they think they know you and they make assumptions and try to tell people about you off their interaction with exactly. you. So that's why I make sure all my interactions are genuine. I feel you. I respect that. I definitely respect that. Tell, tell me something that I wouldn't mm -hmm. know about you. That I wouldn't. Um, no matter how much research <laughs> I do, like, I'm not going to notice about you. That you wouldn't know about me. Um, I don't even know <laughs> what what research you got. That's the question. Like, what do you already know about me? Did you know I was from Louisiana? I didn't know you were from Louisiana, but I knew you weren't from Texas. How do you know I wasn't from Texas? 
I'm, I'm good at looking at people and, and being able to judge and be like, no, they not from Austin. They so, not from Texas. So what they makes <laughs> what what dictates that? You just don't have the same. You don't carry yourself like mm-hmm. a the, Texas person. Okay. Like I'm from <laughs> Illinois. Everywhere, everywhere I go, people know I'm not from Texas. Yeah, you can kind of tell you're not from Texas either. Yeah, I get you. I get you. And it'd be the first question: like, Where you from? Where you from? I'm like, Oh man, I'm, I'm from. And I'd be mm-hmm. throwing them off. Uh, I'm, I'm from O2. I'm from Fofo. Fo. Oh, yeah. you're from, you're from, oh no. you know so and so? No, 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 I don't no, know. Bro, no. <laughs> so, what you wouldn't know about me? God dang, I don't think anything interesting. Like, Who's your favorite music artist? I love J. Cole. It's my baby. It's my baby. I'm, so- I'm sorry. Like, I don't know. Why? Cause he likes him. No way. Hey, I'm I'm just going off of what I see going on around here. Shut up! No, no. Cause it, cause his hair all natural. No. <laughs> <laughs> they can't hear okay. What what no. is? No, like I grew. I mean, when I was in high school, I I listened to to him for the first time, and I was like, okay, I like this. And then the lyrics he was speaking, I connected with. That's the main reason I love J Cole. His lyrics. And I connected with his lyrics. Yeah, when he sampled that Paula Abdul, that was my shit. Exactly. People think, oh, you're just mainstream and all that. I liked him before he was just... Right, so since you're not mainstream, <laughs> let me tell you something else I know about you. <laughs> See, that's how I lead into these things. Okay. Let's make it come. Um, you find yourself in a lot of locations where there's a lot of local music artists, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So who who will be one of your favorite? I'm not saying is your favorite, but who is one of your favorite local artists to catch perform? Besides me, besides me, you ain't gotta say me. <laughs> who, who, who you got? You. Because you be at Art Hub, right? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I almost pulled up on you. I almost pulled a bird, man. I knew a couple places you'd be at. You I think really? That's <laughs> you were the one. <laughs> No, all the, the music artists at our hub were extremely talented. Like, me, I'm so introvert. Like, I wasn't able to, like, really converse with them and everything. But I was, I was impressed. I really was. Like, you know who really doing something right now mm-hmm. that I think is, is different? What? And a lot of people don't give them their credit. Mm-hmm. Big Beard Ali. Mm-hmm. And Al B. I haven't heard of them. Yeah, so they're they can rap, mm-hmm. but they're more so into like the grown, the grown type vibe. They do more R and B. That's the vibe. I yeah. love that. I yeah. love R and B. So you definitely, if you if you haven't checked them out, you should check them out. They they local For and they sure. they got a project got called Lost in Time. Is it's like that. Say less. Yeah. Definitely gonna check them out. I want to take one quick break because I want to bring these boys out here so they can get this cricket green <laughs> because they ain't finna be up all night in one second and all your raps let me find out how that shit just say be cap let me find out you ain't never bust no strap ain't no stamps up on your pack and they don't know you in the trap let me find out Back at it, back at it. Miss Treasure, you ready to have some fun? Okay. <laughs> okay I don't know shit about art, for uh, real. Okay? Mm-hmm. But I'm going to ask you some co- couple questions and you tell me if you know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Which famous painter was also a sculptor and an architect and an engineer? Oh my God. Like, what? Is it Michelangelo, like one of the Ninja Turtles? <laughs> it is not Michelangelo. What? Okay, <laughs> just to make this more interesting for you. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> just to make this more interesting Google? for you, we gonna do no, 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 no. We gonna do a dollar per correct answer. I'm not gonna. <laughs> Mm. 
So we know it's not Michelangelo. Not Michelangelo. We're going to start right now. Here you go. Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> it is Leonardo da Vinci. All right. All right. One dollar. One dollar. Okay. Let me make sure I ask something. Oh, I want to give you all my money. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to know. Like, I did not go to our school. <laughs> yeah, some of this shit is crazy. Like, I don't know. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Which other painter is often associated with Francisco Gelat? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Um, can I get a picture? I can't give you a picture, but okay, I, can, I, can give you, I can give you a clue. I'm about to give you a clue. <laughs> his first and his last name start with the same letter. Um. You can just give me the last name if you don't know the first name. I don't know either, so I'm going to pass on that one. Is it famous? Should yeah. Yeah, it's famous. Um. Repeat the question. Repeat the question. You know I can't say the other artist's name. God damn it. All right. All right, here. It says he's associated with Francisco Galat. And I'll tell you, it starts with a P. Oh, Pablo Picasso? Should <laughs> I, I should only give you 50 cent. <laughs> Mine. Oh. Um, You ain't gonna know that shit. Um, probably not. If you get it wrong, do I get my dollar back? No, we ain't doing that. Uh, That's not the game. All right, all right. <laughs> you got it started. Check. Just check. All right, you ready? Yeah. <coughs> Claude Monet is most known for his paintings of what? Is it flowers? I guess I give you that. It, is it flowers? It's water lilies. Is that that's flowers? Mm -hmm. Damn, I know about art. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> for you not that gone to school for art, yeah, you sure do know a lot. <laughs> You're trying to pick a hard one, and I know you. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> Go for it. Who painted the girl before a mirror and the weeping woman? I gave you this one already. God damn, you gave you already said it out loud or did I, I gave it to you on a different answer. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm gonna take my L because I don't fucking know. Do I what other answer did I help you with? Leonardo da Vinci? I did help you with that one, didn't I? You did. Yeah, it's not right. Alright, I right. it's Picasso. God damn it. Yeah. Alright. I, I should technically get that, but it's alright. How you should get that? Because I already said it. It was a different question. <laughs> okay, this last one. Let me find you. Let me find you. Mm -hmm. I know who that artist is too, but I want to make sure it's... You made an easy one. Okay. So I look like a fraud, you know. <laughs> you ready for this? Yeah. It don't get no easier than this. Vincent Van Gogh. That's your artist, right? Oh, baby. Okay. Had an older brother who died at birth. God damn, why y'all going deep like that? <laughs> what was his name? Okay. Okay. One. Why would I know his brother's name? That's your artist. Why would I know his brother's name? No. That's your artist, because you should. Frederick. Okay, wait a second. I want you to really think about this. What would be like the most fucked up thing? I mean, I guess it could be fucked up. Mm -hmm. What would be like the most messed up thing you can think of mm -hmm. some parents doing if they lost a child okay. at birth mm -hmm. and then they had another child? Oh, they would name him the same thing? So his name was Vincent Van Gogh too? Mm -hmm. 
That's what? I didn't even know that. That's so, crazy. His name was Vincent Van Gogh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> Damn, I'm so bad for getting this dollar. It's just, that's fucked up. You want to shoot some dice? I'm trying to win my dollars back. No, you good. Oh. I think you you could. You gamble? You play poker or anything? No, I'm good. I don't Down gamble. Down no. Spades. I'm a safe person. I'm just. <laughs> 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 well, do you have any questions for me? Anything you'd like to know about me? Um. My lawyer, why? my lawyer, not here, so be careful what you ask. Mm, why do you do podcasts? Because a lot of people who just. I enjoy talking to people and just getting to know, like, so, them. So you're friendly? <laughs> yeah, I am. Like, my friends be like, oh, you, like, <laughs> my girl, your friendly ass. Your no, friend. yeah, friend. yeah. Every, every time I talk to somebody in public, like, yeah. I, that's just how I was raised. Like, I can't walk past somebody on the mm -hmm. street and I at least say, hey, how you doing today? Even mm -hmm. if you're looking at me with a screwed up face, all that, like, I'm still going to speak to you. Exactly. That's how and, it is in other states where it's like, how, how, how you doing? And... People out here just like. But then, also, like I said, just being able to mm -hmm. put a spotlight on other people. Yeah. Like, I've done music for so long. I've tried for so long to get off other platforms. Yeah. And like I said, they charge and charge and charge. Like, Text. I don't want. Like, I'm good. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're I'm chilling. Not, yeah. I'm, the money ain't, ain't what I'm in it for. It's, it's exactly. really to show genuine love to people and really help get their craft out there nope. to people that might not know. Like you say, mm -hmm. you come saying fit in, fit in. Yeah. You never know who mm -hmm. gonna watch that I rock with that's gonna hit you up and be like, and you ain't never done nothing for no celebrities, no famous people. No. I got famous people in my family. Really? My cousin's husband is a wide receiver coach for the Rams. Yeah, so it might be somebody on his team that might see it and be like, man, I got kids, bro, mm -hmm. it's, that's live. Oh. Ask her, can she get this? You know what I mean? It's, like, it's all about making those connections. Yeah, giving that, that opportunity is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I do the podcast, just to be able to put positive energy out into the world and hope something positive come back I respect to everybody. That. I definitely respect that. What else you got? Why do you smoke weed? <laughs> <laughs> so I smoke weed. <laughs> For multiple reasons. You would never know that I have mm -hmm. bad anxiety. Really? You, would you never, have bad anxiety. You would never know it. So when you was when you were coming have, out here, yeah, I know. I have really bad anxiety. So, so and he be trying to get you to do the essential yeah. oils and all that. Like that. he's like, you have to go do this. I didn't want to come here. I ain't gonna lie. I was I was gonna cancel and I was what you have to realize is you can't let that type of shit control mm -hmm. your life and the things that you do in life. Mm -hmm. So, I have anxiety out of this world. Wow. But I can smoke some weed, mm -hmm. go take me a shower, put me some drops in my eyes, mm -hmm. boom, and go on through my day until I need to smoke again in order to level myself back out. But people look at it like, oh, you just smoke weed because you like smoking weed. No, so no. it helps some people. So, yeah, yeah so it, it has some purpose for some people. No. I throw my damn son through the wall mm. if I wasn't smoking weed. Because especially some of the things you do or you get in trouble mm. for that I, you know you know better. Yeah. It's like, okay, I don't want to raise you how some of us were raised where, okay, exactly. just beat his ass all the time. That's going to make him do right. Because it's not going to make me do right. Exactly. That's going to make me be like, okay, I'm immune to all the pain and shit. Now I can mm -hmm. go out here in the street and what somebody brings to me ain't going to be nothing because I know I done felt at home. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so weed, weed for me, it, it does a lot. And I mm -hmm. feel like it, it draws my focus in to where mm -hmm. I can accomplish the things I'm trying to get done. If Otherwise, still, I'm scattered all over the place. Yeah, if you're still accomplishing everything you need to be accomplished. Why you stop smoking weed? I depended on it. Though it was a different like aspect for me. Like So weed, tomorrow's Earth Day, you ain't gonna celebrate? Mm, probably not. <laughs> How the shit is that? I'm high on life. 
I'm, okay, I give you credit because one thing I will say is mm -hmm. for you to be able to for you to be able to stop. Yeah, it was hard. It was so hard. And then not do it because for me, if I stop, I wouldn't be able to smoke mm -hmm. that first one again. Yeah. Because it would be like a, a straight <laughs> roller coaster after that. You yeah, know what after I mean? that. Like, I wouldn't have the urge to stop. Like, I wouldn't be able to control it. Exactly. I just stop. And Washington is legal, so you could be driving around. Yeah, and make me want to move back to Illinois because it's legal there. Man. You know? Man. Yeah. Imagine what, what I could be paying compared to what I got to pay right now. Oh, so calm and everything. I miss it. I do. I miss that part. But Would you recommend people moving and living in Washington? I would recommend it, but a lot of people don't like it because it's so far from their family and stuff. And they're not used to it. And it's just like, it's the nature, it's the beauty of it. It's just, I do recommend it if you feel like you need to experience something on your own and not just be attached to family and all the time. So you're saying it's a good it'd be a good place to like go take like a Zen type trip like exactly. you just want to escape. Exactly. Are you big on like spiritual shit I am. being from Louisiana? I am. Not like voodoo shit but like Louisiana I feel like it's more Christian and it's more religion. So I kinda strayed away from that a little bit when I went to Washington. That's when you kind of found like your... Still believe in God, still be but it's a, a kinder God. It's a it's a, a God that accepts who I am than compared to... So, you want me to give you my, my perception yeah. on, on this religion and church and God and stuff? Go ahead. I, you look at me like, man, this motherfucker crazy. Yeah, my parents probably watching this. <coughs> like, mm -hmm. well, shout out to your parents. Name you treasure. I like that. That's different. I, I don't know too many people named treasure. I really don't know nobody named treasure except for this treasure. So we appreciate you for doing that. God bless y'all. As I go into this talk about religion. So I got a problem. Yeah. Not even so much with religion. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like everybody should have their own relationship with God, be able, or whoever your God is. I'm not saying you got to be a Christian, a, a Muslim, whatever you do. Praise whoever you praise. Mm -hmm. But what I don't like is I've had bad experiences at churches that I've gone to mm -hmm. where I see the money being stolen, like literally in front of your face. Mm -hmm. I see relationships being formed and different things going on, you know what I mean, that should be going on. So for me, I don't feel like I got to go up in somebody's church in order to be able to come to God and have a relationship with God. And I feel like mm -hmm. he watches me and sees me every day. Yeah. So he, he should know, okay, I'm not out here with no ill intent towards anyone. You know what I mean? Doing anything, trying to harm anyone. Yeah. So I feel like I'm walking the way I need to be walking. Like, yeah, there's some things that I, you know what I mean, probably didn't yeah. out of my life, but it's not the worst that I could be. Yeah, you're and not I'm, out here murdering people house. and stuff. Like you're not, yeah. You know what I mean? So that that's how I look at it. So yeah, and my parents don't really agree with my version of when I moved out and everything of God and everything. But I believe He's forgiving, and He's loving. And when I moved out, I don't go to church either because when I go to church, I get judged. And I get looked at because the tattoos, the piercings. I got baptized in church and I had tattoos and piercings and everything. They were looking at me like, right, I was but, just but, so but, uncomfortable. But, but they say when you get baptized, you're supposed to be washing yourself and cleansing yourself of all your sins. So at that point, yeah. anything else on my body should matter. And I told my parents, I was like, they were looking at me in a certain way. And I didn't feel comfortable. And they were like, oh, you have tattoos. You have to cover it up. And I have to wear this dress. That would, had long sleeves and it was long and everything and I was like, I'm not comfortable in this. Like, I'm like, why am I here if you're not loving me the way I feel like God loves everyone? God is love. And at the end of the day, if a church doesn't feel like God is love, don't be there. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. What do you think about, uh, so I saw a story the other day mm -hmm. where... The pastor was up there preaching, mm -hmm. 
and the kids came into the church. You saw that? No, I haven't seen it. Yeah, so they came into the church, and the pastor said he just knew mm -hmm. that they wasn't in there with any good intentions. Yeah. So he stopped how he was talking mm -hmm. and started talking to the kids, but he signaled for somebody to go ahead and call the police. Really? Yeah. And he approaches the kids, and he's talking to them, and he's like, oh, God, just had, had y'all come in here today, huh? And the mm -hmm. kid's like, yeah, yeah. And one of them was mm -hmm. so nervous when he was approaching, he had already dropped his gun. Mm -hmm. They, he, he they came in there to rob the church. Oh, wow. But he talked to them and just, like, had them all thrown off until the police got there to oh, get them. Wow. So I'd be looking at stuff like that. You had that go on. Mm -hmm. You got the pastor that was up there preaching that time. And they yeah. ran in there on the live stream and robbed the whole church while they was on the live stream. That's, Wow. You know, and they walking around with Rolexes and riding around in foreign cars and so so it's like I don't feel like I should come give my ten percent tithes and offerings to your church. Yeah, it's Because what are you doing with it? Exactly. Exactly. If it's going straight to the church and like, you know, church events and all of that stuff, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Right? So me, I'm the type of person somebody say, Hey, we trying to do A, B, C and D. Cool. I'll help you out. Yeah. Guess how I'm gonna help you out though? I'm going to go and purchase it myself so I know that's what my money was spent on. Exactly. Instead of me just giving you some money for you to do whatever you want to do. It, in the Bible, it's like you don't worship false prophets. And it's just like if you're giving all your money to the pastor, I feel like that's who you're worshiping and you're not worshiping God. Right. And in a sense, like, God, God doesn't need money. Like, it doesn't... Right, he ain't spending them half. I would be sitting in church as a kid, and I would be like, why Why are we giving God a piece of paper? What is he going to do with a piece of paper? Because at the end of the day, money is a piece of paper. Wait, those dollars you gave me is a piece of paper. So why are we giving it to God? And I'm just like, that's not for God. That's for the church. That's for, like, you know, to run the air conditioner. That's, that, right. that's for that. If you want to ask for that, then ask for that. But don't place it where it's for God. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's like... Building fun. Exactly. It's for the building. It's for, like, where, where we're sitting right now in this chair. It's to make sure it doesn't crack. So can you give money for that so we can come here every day? But don't and say they it's be, for uh, Yeah, God. they should be up front and say that. Exactly. So I was just like, Mom, why, why, why are we doing this when we don't, we don't have the money to be given this? But I couldn't really say that. Because they're selling you a dream that if you give your 10%, he's going to bless you. Because I know, I don't know if I'm going to go to heaven or hell. I don't know. I know where nobody, I'm going. Nobody knows. I know where I'm going. I pray every night. I, guess, like where, I, guess, guess where I'm going? <laughs> where? Somewhere other than here. <laughs> That's all I know. We, we all don't know, but I know that God loves me. I'm coming back though. Yeah, he like he, he loves. He just who whoever it is, what it being it is, whatever it is, it's love. And I don't think it's about money. I don't think it's about these strict rules. Like you can't have tattoos. You can't have piercings. All my, all my tattoos is mostly about God. I ain't gonna lie to anybody. Like when they ask me about it, it's, it's, it's about God. It's about the struggles I've been through. It's about what I overcame. And it involves God. So, if you feel uncomfortable about it, I don't really care. <laughs> like, but my version of God is just love. That's it. That's all it is, is love. Mm. Well, that's deep. <laughs> no. Yeah. Faith. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what faith is. Faith? Yeah. You grew up in the church. What's the definition of faith? I don't feel like... Every person has a different version of faith, but I feel like faith is something that gets you through the day. It's just, it what, it's what gets you through life, because everybody wakes up, everybody clocks in to work, and it, it's just like, it's, it's faith that things will get better, and things are what they're me meant to be. I know that sounds like really... The substance cute. of things hopeful and the evidence of things unseen. When you take it out of the darkness and you bring it into the light. Exactly. Because if we just waking up to wake up. No, nah, I, I want to wake up just to wake up. Exactly. <laughs> when you don't wake up, I mean, it's over with for you. Yeah, I, I want to wake up. 
matter what. Of course, of course. Okay, well, I appreciate you for coming through. Like I said, we'll definitely make sure you get your website put down on the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Try to run your clientele up. Yeah. I'll reach out to some people, show the artwork that I got from you. Yeah, give me some. I got another idea too that I wanted to run by you. Yeah. I don't want to say it on camera. Oh. Okay. I, don't, I don't want nobody to steal it. <laughs> All right, I got you. I got you. But but it's it's I, I think you're gonna like it. Thank you. You know anything about making some money? I'm pretty sure. I like that. I like money. But money just paper. That's cool. Money just paper. It is paper, but it pays bills. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there anything you like to say to the people before before we sign off here? Um, I I guess y'all, I hope y'all enjoy me talking, cause yeah, it's the you, most I've talked in a month. So. Can you tell the people because I always want people to feel free to reach out to me to try to book mm -hmm. and be on the show. Mm -hmm. Can you give an honest opinion of what your experience has been like it sucked <laughs> i'm just kidding and no it was really it was great like he was very welcoming they cooked us a whole meal up in there i was like what but beer galore like i'm taking some home right yeah i think it's just one doing it on camera so he can't <laughs> back out on that but he's very very good host like this is the greatest podcast i've been on so far and there you have it, Cushion Combo. We signing off. Appreciate y'all for watching. Mm -hmm.